Um, I hope you guys are doing well. Um, and um, remembering the, to reach out to one another, um, to check in on one another and see how each other's doing. Um, we are excited to join you again in, in worship through song. Um, and uh, I'm really excited for this set in particular because I just really feel like um, the Spirit's going to wash over us and and um, uh, they're good reminders of who God is, who Jesus is, what the Holy Spirit has done in us and what He is doing and capable of um, as we are reminded that um, we... Um, serve a mighty God who is capable of, um, incredible things. Um, and we, um, look to him as our hope and as our source, as our cornerstone, um, and as our strength. Um, and so this morning as we sing these songs, I pray that, um, they would be more than just words, but that they would really come from the depths of ourselves, um, of our souls and, and a cry out to the Lord, um, and, uh, worshiping with our whole, whole beings. Um, so let's pray together. God, we thank you that you are with us, Holy Spirit, that you dwell, um, in us. God, that you, um, you meet with us, um, God, that you just didn't, you didn't leave us deserted or stranded on an island, stranded on this earth um, without you, but that um, you dwell with us. And so, Lord, this morning, some of us come with very heavy hearts, with lots of things on our minds. And God, we pray that we would surrender those things to you. And we pray that um, we would look to you, Lord, um, where our help comes from. Um, and this morning, God, we pray that, um, our eyes would be fixed on you, Lord, and our, our ears would be open to hear what you want to speak to us and our hearts ready to act. And God, we pray that, um, you would move in a mighty way, Lord, and that, um, you would heal, um, broken relationships, um, and that you would restore relationships, and um, bring understanding amongst each other. We love you, and we pray this in the precious holy name of Jesus. Amen.
Yes, God, we thank you that you are Lord of all. God, we pray that um, you would have your way in us and have your way in the service. Again, give us eyes to see and ears to hear and hearts ready to receive and to act. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. We'll pass it off to Sean to continue prayer for us. Well, good morning and welcome. Thank you for joining us. Um, let's continue in prayer. Father, we just, I just thank you. Thank you for this time to just come together. A time that we can just seek your face. A time that we can lift you up right now and all that is going on right now, Father. Lord, we lift it up to you. We pray healing over this nation healing in this land. Father, we come against this spirit of destruction, this spirit of hatred, this spirit of, the spirit that is just not of you, Lord. I, I pray you have your way with us right now. I pray that your spirit of conviction would be upon us, would be upon this land, that we'd be turning to you right now, that we'd be lifting up your voice, that we would be crying out to you, Father. Be with us right now. Speak to us. Give us direction. Give us guidance. Lord, we pray protection over all of those that are out uh, serving our, our, our military, our National Guard, our police officers, our first responders. Father, be with them. Protect them. Keep them safe. Give them wisdom. Give them guidance. Be with them right now, Lord. Be with their families. Father, we pray for all of those that are hurting, all those that are feeling that their voices are not being heard, Father. We pray the truth. We pray your truth go forward. Lord, we pray the church begins to speak your truth as it ought to be spoken, that it not be watered down in any way to appease any particular faction but that we stand on your truth that we stand on your principles Lord be with us have mercy upon us Father be with this church be with this congregation Lord as we seek your wisdom moving forward Father we're praying for we're just praying that your will be done we're praying that you have your way with us Lord we thank you this day. Thank you for hearing us. Thank you for all that you do for us, Father. All that you've done, all that you will do. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning, Midway families. Before we pray a blessing on our children, I want to recognize one of them, our very special Aurora Day, who is graduating from Midway Elementary this year. Aurora, we want you to know that your entire church family are so proud of you. Remember that you are and will continue to be cared about, cherished, and prayed for by all of us. At this time, let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for Aurora, a young woman who makes the world more special just by being in it. We pray your blessing on her and on all the children here at Midway Community Covenant Church, as well as those in our surrounding community. May they receive your promise from Jeremiah 29, 11, where you say, I know the plans I have for you. They are plans for good, not evil. They are plans to give you a future and a hope. Thank you, Father, for this promise for our children. During these unsettling days, May their examples of kindness, love, and forgiveness to one another be a ray of light to those around them. We thank you, Father, for our children and for the privilege of praying your blessing on them. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning. Our scripture from today comes from the book of Acts, chapter 4, verses 1 through 12. The priests and the captain of the temple guard and the Sadducees came up to Peter and John while they were speaking to the people. 
They were greatly disturbed because the apostles were teaching the people, proclaiming in Jesus the resurrection of the dead. They seized Peter and John, and because it was evening, they put him in jail until the next day. But many who heard the message believed, so the number of men who believed grew to about 5,000. The next day the rulers, the elders, and the teachers of the law met in Jerusalem. Annas the high priest was there, and so were Caiaphas, John, Alexander, and others of the high priest's family. They had Peter and John brought before them and began to question them, By what power or what name did you do this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers and elders of the people, if we are being called to account today for an act of kindness shown to a man who was lame and are being asked how he was healed, then know this, you and all the people of Israel. It is by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, but whom God raised from the dead, that this man stands before you healed. Jesus is the stone you builders rejected, which has become the cornerstone. Salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved. May God bless the reading of his word. Well, good morning to everyone. I'm pleased to be with all of you this morning. I'm pleased and thankful to be your interim pastor, eager to learn from you and from God and how he is at work with us, through us, and around us. May I take a few minutes at the beginning of this message to invite you to join me in holding two principles that promote health and safety and healing in Jesus church. First, I invite you to come directly to me as your pastor with any question or concern you have about me or what I have preached or what I am teaching. It's an invitation to just come directly to me. Please don't go to anyone else and talk with them about it. I, I will receive you and I will be with us together in having Midway Community Covenant Church be as healthy as it can be. The second is I will regard it as loyalty to me when you come with any question or concern about me or the church. Please don't go to anyone else inside or outside the church. I invite you to come and talk with me and you won't have anything to fear. I will seek God. I will seek to listen. I will seek to pray and listen to the Lord on how I can improve and what he wants for his church. This is biblical. Going directly to the person in the church we may have a concern or issue with. It stops all gossip and fueling unhealthy relationships in Jesus' church. He really is the head of the church, and he gets to have us follow his biblical principles so that the church can be a safe place for church people and a safe place for unchurched people to enter in and find God's love and find our love for them. Thank you. I, I wanted to say that, and I'm not saying that because I have uh, heard of anything 
going on. I just have a policy at the beginning of every interim pastorate or any, any pastorate or church plant that I've been a, pa a part of to directly say that. And um, it has proven healthy. It has brought health. And I would like to pr stop a minute here and just pray over any historical lingering issues or gossip or um, unhealthy conversations that have happened so that we are starting off together on just a clean footing. So may we pray. Lord, you know all things. And you are the head of your church. Lord, you see the history of this congregation from its beginning early uh, vision of people who wanted to plant church here. And you've been aware throughout all the years. And Lord, I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful for the ministry that has gone on here. And Lord, we would ask that you would um, cleanse and forgive and repair any place where we have uh, spoken unrighteously about another person or not gone directly to them to work things out. Lord, where there's been misunderstanding when it could have just become clear by talking directly to the person. So I thank you now that in Jesus' name and by his authority, you have the power to cleanse us from all unrighteousness and to set us on a clean foot, a clean footing together as we go together in your mission in Midway Covenant Church. Pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for that. We are continuing our study in the early church in the book of Acts of the Apostles. And today we are learning from Acts chapter 4, verses 1 through 12. And I invite you to turn there in your Bibles. And I want to just share that I have anguished over this message and how it relates to us and how it relates to our culture in this time, there is a lot happening. What's fascinating is we film these on Tuesday and it's five days till Sunday where you hear them. And so much is still happening in our culture. What is evident in our passage today is that it points out opposition and scandal and power plays against Christians and Jesus church from outside the church. What is the main issue? The main issue in these 12 verses is that Peter and John are teaching the Jewish people about the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. They are teaching this in Jesus name. Remember the healing just outside the gate, beautiful. And they go inside and a large crowd is gathered around them. And Peter and John um, know that Jesus has risen from the dead and that he's Lord of all. And so they're teaching the people who have come running into the temple courts and they get quite a negative reaction from the Jewish leaders who do not believe in the resurrection of the dead, namely the Sadducees who had control of the temple area. They had power that they wanted to hang on to even while they were under Roman rule. The Romans had charge of their vestments. The priests had to go into the praetorium to get their robes and their rest vestments. That's how much authority the Romans had. Israel is occupied. 
The issue is resurrection from the dead in Jesus name. I want to share the story of my ordination mentor, Jerry Reed. He and his wife, Nancy, were first missionaries in Colombia and Mexico. And Jerry met a couple in a very remote part of Colombia where he learned when he was visiting them that the wife of this couple had died. But she and her husband told Jerry the story of her sickness and death and then about her husband's prayer for her. What she was experiencing was a coming out of her body fully alive with no pain. And she found herself walking with Jesus. And Jesus said to her, I love the children very much. And she said, yes, Lord. She was the one who worked with the children in this very remote area, was teaching them about the love of Jesus for them. At the same time, as she is reporting having this conversation with Je Jesus, her husband is at her bedside. She is gone. And he's kneeling down and he's praying and saying, Lord, we, we need her for the ministry of the children. Lord, if it's your will, would you send her back? Because the children need her. And she's being asked by Jesus, I could send you back if you are willing to continue to serve the children. And she reports looking at Jesus into his face and seeing the love on his face. And she said, yes, Lord, I am willing. And there is the husband on his knees, fervently praying, and he hears a gasp. And his wife is breathing rhythmically. And they have some very, very tender moments together as they tell each other what they had experienced. And Jerry was deeply touched by this story. And since he was my ordination mentor, I got to hear all about it. Can we see injustice at work in Peter and John's arrest by the priest, the captain of the temple guards and the Sadducees in verse three? They, they were seized. What was their crime? There's no real crime. The issue was that they were teaching the people about the resurrection from the dead in Jesus name. And try to throw in a little humor here. One contemporary pastor complained that he did not seem to be having the same effect as the apostles or Paul. He said to a friend, many places where the apostles or Paul went, there were riots. Wherever I go, they serve me tea. Have we, the church, become so attached to our culture that we don't stand out? as Jesus' church? Does our love for one another 
draw the attention and the gaze of others not familiar with Jesus and Christianity? Have we accepted current injustices in our culture that we don't speak up and are not listened to? There is lots of trouble in the book of Acts with the apostles and with Paul and with Barnabas. Here in our text today, Peter and John were boldly proclaiming the truth of the resurrection hope in the person, the work, the name of Jesus Christ, and they were doing it right in the temple courts. This greatly irritated and disturbed the religious leaders. So the arrest happens in verse three. And it is if Peter and John were being profiled for their honest teaching, which did not agree with the Jewish religious leaders beliefs. The next day when Peter and John were brought out and questioned by the rulers and the elders and the teachers, they asked this, it's in verse seven, by what power or by what name did you do this healing? By what power or by what name did you do this healing? Have you ever been seized by persons in authority and questions for something you said or you did that was not even criminal? Rather, it was act of kindness and healing. In the Evangelical Covenant Church, quite some years ago, they started taking trips called sent Kofa trips and they started with covenant pastors. I happened to get in on the very first one. It was a situation where we stayed on a bus three nights and four days traveling to the South to see the sites of racial riots and unjust untold issues over the last 400 years. That was in 1990 that I went. Sankofa is an African word that means to go back in order to go forward. To look at the past injustices and confess them so that we can go forward and where we can provide restitution and go forward in peace and harmony with all people. On our trip, we visited the black church where white planted a bomb. It went off during the Sunday school hour and four little girls were killed with many others wounded. We visited jails where 98 and 99% of the persons were black. On and on, we saw the fear and inequality that our African Americans, brothers and sisters lived in. We watched movies on the bus and discussed them. Difficult mo movies about racism. Maybe you saw Remembering the Titans it was one that I remember we saw. In these situations, some people had power, mostly the whites, and others did not. When I returned to Chicago, I went into a Home Depot and it was as if I had been blind for years. I went in and as I looked 
at the employees of this Home Depot, I could not find one white employee. They were all persons of different color. And I hadn't seen it before. I, I just lived in my white understanding of a white world. Peter and John were experiencing persecution for being devoted to Jesus. They had been with Jesus, whom the Jewish religious leaders tried to get rid of. And what was it about? Power. The temple religious leaders did not want to share power, nor did they understand that God's power is righteous and humble. It uses humility. So verse seven again, by what power or name did you do this? And Peter, who's filled with the Holy Spirit in verses eight through 12, he says, Peter said to them, rulers and elders of the people, if we are being called to account today for an act of kindness, shown to a man who was lame and being asked how he was healed, then know this, you and all the people of Israel, it is by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, but whom God raised from the dead, that this man stands before you healed. And then they say, Jesus is the stone you builders rejected. But he has become the capstone, the foundation. Salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven or on earth by which we human beings may be saved. Peter's words are clear, they're strong, they're biblical, they're bold. No other name, no other religion, no other power in or around the temple courts brought salvation. It was an exclusive claim. But Peter was speaking truth. He says, you crucified Jesus, but God raised him from the dead. Now, Jesus is the place where God is building his new temple. Not a temple made of stones and mortar, but the community of his church in and through us as we walk following Jesus as he leads, as we walk in humility with one another, as we walk his way. And he implements his kingdom ministry through us. I know it's not popular in our culture to claim there is only one way only one way to God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. But this is what the Bible has told. It is Jesus, the Christ, the Messiah. And we are to do the best we can at obeying and following him as his church. I pray we stay together. And I welcome any comments directly to me. May we pray. Lord, would you use this text and these words of scripture to cause us to be the church that you want us to be. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.
May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God the Father and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Thanks for joining us for Midway Covenant Live. Be sure to join us every Sunday morning at 10 a.m. for worship and learning. 